Hello everyone, uh, we are in the back seat of a Continental. Unfortunately, this is not the suicide door one. Uh, they do have a suicide door over there, uh, further out, but it's all uh, closed off for anyone because they only have 80 of them, I guess. We'll try and shoot some pictures up there yeah. for you. I think we got a couple, but uh, yeah, we kind of want to just do a little uh, review from like the, uh, the back seat of a car here. The luxury segment um, the luxury of Focus segment. Garage covering Chicago <laughs> Auto Show. So yeah, I mean, we definitely left some stuff out. Uh, we were checking out the uh, Audi A8 so far, and then uh, what other luxurious car? That's really it, right? Q8. Yeah, we looked at the back seat of the Q8, the A8. Oh, and then the uh, Navigator. We've checked that out so far. But uh, yeah, right now we are in the. Uh, oh. There we go, we got people coming in at us here. We're in the back seat of the uh, Lincoln Continental, and we're just gonna give you an idea of the space. I'm about six feet tall here, and um, this is you know where the driver would sit, and there's uh, you know a good amount of space uh, behind them where I can have my legs and everything. These seats are reclinable adjustable, so you can see I'm putting the back seat up, and I can recline it back down there. So you've got that option. Um, I think this isn't the top spec one. I feel like the one we sat in last year had like uh, the lower pieces as well. Yeah, also it had like the, the center, center controls. This one has that also, oh. so we'll pull that down for you guys here. Right, here you go. Yeah, so I'll flip your light on here just to uh, give you a little bit more light. So, yeah, you do have the full center control here where you can play with the uh, the stereo and everything like that. However, it is off right now. You can control your climate control. Yeah, your rear climate control. I believe you can even do the sunshade up and down, but again, powered off. You got your little pass through here. But what's nice for about your that ski. is you also have a little center console. Yeah, the one we sat in last year, I believe, had a heat, uh, cooled center console. You got some cup holders out here. So again, just this is one of these vehicles where it's at that borderline price range where do you get driven around in or you know do you drive it yourself? You know you can get these with the four and horsepower engine, uh, you know not bad, but soft touch materials. Uh, it's got a very very nice sound system in these cars, and uh, you know headroom is actually kind of shockingly little for a. Um, yeah, it looks like they made a package in there for you. Yeah, they got little cutouts here, but it's actually shockingly on the small side for a uh, vehicle. That's kind of this more executive Well, spec. it does have a sunroof, so I would say that that's because of the sunroof they have. Yeah, that may be impacting the uh, the head space of it there, but yeah, that's pretty much yeah. the back seat of this car. Oh. <laughs> so from out of 10, let's do that, what would you give this car? Okay, so yeah, as we talk about other vehicles here, uh, to cover the back seat of this, I'd probably rate this at like a 6. How about yourself? I would say around 6, yeah. 5 and a half, 6 is where I'm coming at this because, I mean, you don't get obviously... Um, some of the cars have mirrors in the ceiling. You don't get that here. No um, TV entertainment. Um, you do get, you know, your own control of the audio, which is nice. And then on Anders' side, since he's on the passenger side, he actually gets a control for the front seat. So I can actually move that back here for you, and you can mess with the. Look at that. You got the seat coming back, so you can control the seat in front of you from the back, which is nice. Again, it's kind of a quirky thing if you want to control your own comfort, but. Not totally spec'd out. You don't have the lower portions of the seat. Um, they don't really recline very far. Headroom is limited. Lighting isn't the best. Materials are kind of meh too. I know in like the Mercedes and the Audis, you have very, very soft touch plush leather. But again, those cars cost significantly more. So, you know, this is a decent place to be. Would you would you drive it or would you be dripping in it? This is a car that uh, I'd rather drive. It's not nice enough for me to want to be driven around in the back yeah, seat. Yeah, I would agree on that. Yeah. It's it's on the borderline, but I would say I would much rather drive this car and driven around. If you want to spoil the hell out of your kids, man, you'll have some happy kids if you put them in the back seat of a car yeah. like this. Messing with your They'll radio. Spill, uh, their pop all in these controls here, ruin all the buttons. It'll be a great time. But yeah, that, that's going to be the Lincoln Continental. Thanks a lot, guys. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the luxury segment. I am by myself in the back seat. I have Mike and Christian up front. We are in a Porsche Panamera. This is one of my coolest uh, bucket lease car that I would like to own in one point because you get these cool seats in the back. So I would, I would say right off the gate, this is not a luxury car at all, but you do have, it, it is a cruiser support yeah GT car more like a so you do have the screen and all that stuff really nice but I would definitely say that this will be a car that I would like to drive so I will show you guys the front of the dash and all that stuff and uh, get these guys opinion about it all right, so sitting in the front seat of the Panamera here, the first thing I want to touch on is the aircraft style controls that Andre was mentioning in, uh, I believe it was the Audi. So this unit here is very, very sleek, and you're going to have your control for, you know, the sunroof, uh, park assist, interior lighting, everything like that. But the overall, like, fit and finish of it and the appearance in the ceiling, it's a 
Very, very, very nice piece here. I've said very at least six times, so you just know the quality. LED lighting, everything like that. Another frameless mirror for that upscale feel. And everything is just kind of uh, waterfalling and cascading through the middle interior here. So you've got your you know, full little infotainment screen here, and then all of your switches and controls compared to the, a lot of the older Panameras where there's a bunch of buttons. Everything in this one is more touch sensitive. So you can see the lighting is off right now, but you can see through here what the buttons look like. You know, you've got your uh, different switches there and everything like that. Shifter right in the middle. This is definitely a fingerprint magnet, as you can see. Uh, the auto show hasn't even opened that long today, and this is, you know, fingerprinted up like crazy. Uh, the gauges are very nice. You've got a uh, analog um, tachometer in the middle with full digital on both sides. So you've got two digital pods on either side of the uh, tachometer there, which is nice. Nice size steering wheel, uh, you know, thick, as some would call it, with, uh, you know, nine and two extensions there if you're. Nine and three, nine and two. I don't even know what I'm saying there. The, the, yeah, yeah, you got nine and three little uh, thumb grips up there, and uh, you know, overall, just nice interior fit, fit and finish. Uh, very nice door handles, aluminum trim everywhere like that. But yeah, Andre, as Andre was saying, it's uh, not so much of a luxury car as it is more of a grand tour with back seats in it. Uh, this is definitely one of those cars that you'd rather drive as compared to be driven in. I'm gonna flip the camera back to Andre, and he'll close this one out for you guys. I'll give you guys a more in-depth of, I can't turn on the screen, but you got a screen over here and some other controls with your seats and all that stuff and your power sunroof that you have up here. You you can only sit two people and you have your little nice uh, armrest and whatnot. And there is not much room in the back when the front driver starts to back up, but I would say for the size of this car, this car would be competing against uh, Audi S7s and RS7s and CLS. CLS and yeah, and I don't, it's bigger than RS5, RS5 would not. But the coolest thing about the Porsche is every Porsche has it, the clock over there up top. It's really cool. <laughs> Actually, it's not every Porsche, it's optional, it's the chrono package. Really? Yep, you have to get but the it's chrono option, package. But it's option. It's available every option Porsche. every Porsche. 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 Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought I said. But anyway, um, you guys know what the outside looks like, so we just wanted to give you guys a quick interior experience. And what do you think, Christian? No, it's a great car. I love the interior, everything about it. Just wish I could turn on the yeah. infotainment. <laughs> well said. It's a nice size screen. All right, we'll move on to the next car and uh, give you guys an update. We're coming at you from the back seat of the Genesis G90. If you are a Korean executive, this is the place to be. Not gonna lie, starting right from the top here, we are very impressed with the features and build quality in the back seat of this car. You've got dual rear seat infotainment systems, which uh, they're centrally controlled through the center stack that you've got here in the rear seats. So you've got your control of the radio for the whole car, uh, and then you can also you know, go ahead and zoom in and out through your navigation and everything like that. That's pretty cool. Um, this also has what I have seen the first time today at the Auto Show, a white Alcantara headliner. And you also do get dual vanity mirrors in the back seat here. Uh, this is something we saw in some of the higher end stuff. And I really like this kind of jewel shaped LED light that you've got in the middle here. Nice kind of soft touch buttons that fade in and out. Um, but what's really nice here is we have full control of the seat. So you've got a control lever right here, which will do your headrest, your uh, reclining, uh, how far the seat is slid out or slid back, and then also very, very plush, soft leather surfaces throughout the back seat of this here. Uh, this is a very, very comfortable place to be. Uh, Legroom is a little bit less than what you'd see in something like the Audi A8L, which is a little bit longer of a car, so that's to be expected here, but there is a gigantic door. I know this video won't do it any justice, but the size of this window and the door, absolutely monstrous. Uh, you've got a pretty nice sound system in this car where you're testing it out, kind of the volume of it, seeing what it sounded like there. You get some modest storage in the back seat here. I think the windows will be locked for you there, but some modest storage inside the back seat here. You've got USB charging and then a regular uh, power outlet there, a cigarette lighter style power outlet, which isn't bad. Obviously, as with most uh, luxury cars, you can flip it up and have uh, you know some access to go through the rear seat, but the point of this here is going full luxury. You got your cup holders. Everything is soft touch too, so when you oh, yeah. open this, it, it doesn't spring out. It's very, very like soft, the way the spring loading of it is. Even that folds down gently. You've got two more uh, power outlets down there. Two more power outlets up there. The car is definitely meant to charge things and you know get you juiced, bruh. Uh, what do you think about this, Andre? Any uh, thoughts think, and impressions? I think this is, uh, this is one of the uh, great 
back seat that I ever set so far in the Chicago Auto Show. And you can absolutely control everything about the front seat and then you can control your uh, screen. Actually, I'm controlling both screens. The one thing that I wanted to see, if I push the navigation here, uh, I can't really do it, but I wonder if it's going to uh, attach it over there, like push it over there to you know, give directions. But you can get the weather on the front seat and you have much more control. So going back to uh, out of 10, what would you say this car is? And one thing I want to say before, this leather seat, this is real. And yeah, it's really it's soft. It's real leather. It's, it's not really that. soft compared yeah. to any other car that we have been except Audi. This seat, this seat, back seat is pretty good. Yeah, we haven't done, you know, the Oops, BMW Alex's. or the Mercedes yet, but this seat, it's a so very far, nice car. Yeah. This, this so far, up to what I've experienced, it's a good seven and a half, eight of a back seven seat and experience. And a half. The only thing I could really complain it on is maybe a little bit of back seat uh, room. And I do sit high in this seat. I tried to lower this. It doesn't seem to want to go any lower. So I am a little bit close to the ceiling. I can kind of readjust my seating position. Um, but a lot of other cars, you do sit lower in them. So with this, I do feel like I'm sitting a little bit high. You know, I think you just got to push Keep it pushing up. pushing the seat out, yeah. Yeah. But I would say this is an eight for me. You know, I'm going to go out. And I would say it first before I ask you, I would like to be driven in this car. I would not want to drive with this car at all. This even particular though, one does have the 5 OV8. Yeah, um, even though it has it has a good engine in it, it's like pretty, uh, it's pretty uh, dynamic car to drive. I would say I would like to be driven in it Absolutely. than drive. This is a car that I'd rather be driven in as well. I'll agree to you with that. Yeah. So comparing so far, we have seen uh, Audi A8. Uh, I don't know if we filmed that, though. We did not. Yeah. What We saw the Lincoln, and we also did the Panamera. Yeah. We want to drive the Panamera because it's a Porsche. Uh, we definitely don't want to uh, be driven in a Lincoln. We both agree. And this car is so much nicer than Lincoln. I don't know yep. where the price point is compared to Lincoln, but I would say this is probably cheaper th than the Lincoln. Depending on how you'd option and yeah. spec it. Yeah, this is definitely a nicer place to be. And yeah, yeah. Close uh, it out with that? Yep. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Till the next one.